Hello and welcome to our video, Leading the Terror. In this video, we're going to be discussing different leaders of different countries in the period of the terror in Latin America. But first, let's go all the way to Chile and learn about Augusto Pinochet. I'm General Augusto Pinochet, and I was Chile's presidente that brought economic wealth from 1973 to 1990. It all began with wealthy class Chileans feeling threatened by Presidente Salvador imposing his ideas of socialism. I mean, come on, we thought he was introducing a Marxist state. Allende was the leader of the Popular Unity Party, and the United States also felt challenged by his government, so I knew I would have their quiet support. And logically, the answer was to respond with a coup d'etat that would submerge the country and interfere. And who better to be in charge than the chief of the National Army? Me. While I was in power, countless people disappeared and lived under terror. But remember, all of this had to happen to restore true democracy and la chilenidad. I don't know why people refer to me as a dictator because I had a majority of supporters and I held countless of national consultations to prove it. But the fact that there weren't electoral records is besides the point. Eventually, I held a plebiscite in 1988 and was in the minority. After receiving pressure to adhere to the results, I had to step down. However, I continued to serve as a senator and received Im immunity from prosecution. Not until 2004 was it confirmed that over 35,000 people were tortured and approximately 3,000 were killed under my regime. Hence, I was placed under house arrest at the age of 90. In 2006, I was formally charged with torture, kidnapping, and murder, but died of a heart attack a few days after hearing I was fit to stand trial. Through everything, I was able to bring an economic boom to Chile and influence socio-political aspects through military imposition, dictatorship. Now we will be traveling to Argentina. Isabel Perón, the president of Argentina, was overthrown by a right-wing military coup in 1976 and replaced by a military general, Jorge Videla. 10,000 to 30,000 individuals were killed, tortured, and kidnapped by the end of the military rule in 1983. Forced disappearings and concentration camps were used to create uncertainty, leaving mothers unaware of the faith of their children and children clueless about their true identities. Even today, there remain individuals who were displaced during this time. The state identified its enemy not as terrorists or quote-unquote outsiders, but rather as an ideology that opposed the homeland and God. Therefore, the dirty war wasn't a real war between two opponents. It was rather violence perpetrated on its victims, who often were regular Argentine citizens. The military engaged in severe human rights violations, and many of its members, including Videla himself, have been imprisoned. The Catholic Church during the Dirty War of Argentina had a rather submissive role in Jorge Videla's military regime. Gustavo Morelo, an Argentine Jesuit priest, wrote a book called The Catholic Church in Argentina's Dirty War, and in it he states the military regime, known as the National Reorganizational Process, claimed to be a Catholic government, yet no other military or civilian government had killed and persecuted as many Catholics as General Jorge Videla's dictatorship. In Morelos' investigation, he claims that there was at least 112 deaths and 179 that were persecuted that were identified as religious workers. Those as seminarians, nuns, priests, bishops, and lay, lay persons. In wake of these numbers, the church, during Videla's campaign, never spoke to defend the victims like in Chile or in Brazil. The fact that they didn't speak out to the regime brings in the question, were they an accomplice of the terror? Due to the church's submissive role during the terror of Videla, Pope Francis has had controversy and betrayal attached to his image within the Argentine society because of the allegation that he sold two of his fellow Jesuits to the military regime and for the silent diplomacy which Pope Francis was infamously quoted on in regards to the church's approach during and towards the dictatorship. To this day, the once Bishop Jorge Berjolio hasn't returned to Argentina as Pope Francis since he got elected into the papacy, which leaves the Argentine citizens to question his and the church's role in Argentina's last military dictatorship.
Now let's travel to Mexico. Hello, my name is Gustavo Diaz Ordaz, and I was president of Mexico from 1964 to 1970. I am part of the PRI, or PRI party, which stands for Partido Revolucionario Institucional. My party is known for press manipulation, electoral fraud, and coercion. We have won every single presidential election from 1929 to 2000, which isn't suspicious at all. Under my leadership, hundreds of people have been murdered, beaten, tortured, jailed, or have vanished into thin air. Luckily for me, however, I have control over the press and media, and few people know of my antics. Lo que pasa es que no dejó el gobierno que se publicara nada. El gobierno prohibió que hubiera periodistas diciendo en los periódicos qué pasó. Ese fue el problema, estaba prohibido. In the preceding audios, we hear from Gustavo Reboyar González, who will be discussing the media blackout and the lack of information distributed throughout Mexico and the world. On the world stage, no one knew of what had happened in Mexico 10 days prior to the Olympics. Dicen que nomás hubo 44 personas muertas, pero no. Wow. Fueron como 300 o 400. autoritario el gobierno y hace lo que se le da la gana y reprime y, y nadie puede contra el gobierno aquí en este país ni los latinoamericanos uh -huh. son muy este muy malos since the massacre took place so soon to the olympics the president hid the entire thing from the public eye some athletes in Mexico protest as they received medals, but it still wasn't enough for the whole world to know and understand. After his term expired, Diaz Ordaz and his family vanished completely from the public eye. In 1977, he was again cast in the public eye as he was appointed the ambassador to Spain. As ambassador, he was met with hostility from both the Spanish media and the Mexican media, as he was persistently asked questions about his actions as president, a.k.a. all the skeletons he had in his closet. He resigned after several months because of that and his health problems. So many people were unhappy with their deaths that they made a catchphrase for him. Al pueblo de España no le mandan esa araña. To the people of Spain, do not send that spider. He died of colorectal cancer on the 15th of July, 1979, at the age of 68.